Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, this is a new series I started, a kind of a series within a series, is Typewriter Basics. The idea is this is focused toward the rank beginner, and some of these episodes are actually based on questions that people new to the hobby have uh, written or called in or dropped an email or a comment down below. So this particular episode is going to be about end of page indicators. That's right. Different ways typewriter manufacturers have made for you to tell when you're getting down to the end of the page. We're going to cover several different types that might surprise you in how different and varied they work. So stay tuned. The end of page indicator was a feature designed to solve this problem. You're typing, you're typing, you're typing, and suddenly you get to the bottom of the page and maybe you're too close to the bottom of the page. Maybe the feed rollers have slipped because you're too close, or maybe you didn't plan the paper or the page out and you just weren't prepared to get to the bottom of the page. It became a surprise to you. Well, manufacturers tried to figure out a way to let the user know when they were coming down to the bottom of the page. And that's what we're going to look at today, the various ways in which they did that. Well, okay, the first kind of end of paper indicator we're going to look at is in this Optima Super. It's sort of reflective of a lot of the Olympia SMs also. A few of the other German typewriters have this kind of end of page indicator. It also serves, of course, as the paper support arm. On the Optima, there's a button right here. You push it. It's a spring-loaded paper support arm that telescopes out. So a person might think that in order to use this paper support finger as an end of page indicator that you would thread the paper into the typewriter, set the printing position to about maybe an inch from the top, which is equivalent to whatever you want it to be on the bottom, and then extend your paper support finger until it touches the top of the paper here. And then as you type and you get down to the point where the top of the paper is touching the top of the paper support finger, you think you're now at the bottom of the page. The problem is that doesn't really work. And the reason why is when you did the initial setup here, the paper is wrapped around the platen. Like you can think of it as a letter J. Curves around, comes up. But when you get to the end of the page, the paper is coming straight up. It's not wrapping through the platen. And the result of that is, so this is the uh, point at which I started my typing, and the paper was wrapped around the platen like that. And this would have been where the top edge of the paper touches the guide, indicating it's the bottom of the paper, except it isn't the bottom of the paper. It's this far off. So what gives? What's the problem? Well, because the paper, in the one hand, when you're initially setting it up, it wraps like a J around the back of the platen, but when you actually use it, it comes from the front of the platen. Those are two different distances. So the way you actually use this paper support finger as an end of page indicator is this. You simply extend the paper support finger all the way up. When the paper touches the support arm like that, it'll be about maybe an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half from the bottom. And that's the only way to really use this paper support finger as an end of page indicator on the Optima and also on the Olympia. Well, here is a Smith Corona Silent Super. This is the 5 Series Portable, and it has a dedicated end of page system up here. There are two scales of numbers. The one on the inside says set and the one on the outside says end. So the way this works is we're going to set the length of the paper with the set scale. So I'm going to set it to 11, which is my American letter size length. So I'm going to set an 11 inch long piece of paper in there in the platen. And then as we type, as the paper advances itself, as you're typing and doing carriage returns, it'll make several revolutions. But now, as you get down to the end of the page, you'll have this red number on end. It says two. That means we're two inches away from the bottom of the paper. There's one and a half, and there's one. Let me make a uh, couple red periods in the paper. And there you can see that, indeed, we have 
about an inch from the bottom of the page, just like what it said. Pretty accurate, actually. So it's not a bad system to use. You just have to know that you have to set, starting with the length of your paper, then thread your paper into the platen, and then you'll look at the end scale as it gets to the bottom. It makes several revolutions, obviously. When it gets to, to near the end of the paper, it'll begin red, two inches, one and a half, one, and it even gives you a half right there. That's the Smith Corona 5 Series method. Okay, the Royal Quiet Deluxe has an end of page system also. It has a single numerical dial and a pointer on the end of the paper bale. And the way this works is you want to first of all set it so it's at the length of the paper. So we have American size paper, so that would be the line below the 12 is 11. So it's pointing to 11. And at that point, you want to actually set your paper into the back of the platen and then you roll it through and start typing and as you do your carriage returns and the dial turns as it gets down toward the bottom of the page now you'll start to see there's 12 and if you get to the 11 here I'm going to type a couple dashes that is about an inch from the bottom of the paper as you can see right here. So that's how that works with the Royal Quiet Deluxe. And it turns out to be maybe about the same as the Smith Corona, maybe slightly simpler. Now we have the wonderful Hermes 3000. All three body styles of the Hermes 3000 have the same end of page indicator. And a number of people who own these typewriters don't actually realize it has an end of page indicator. You'll notice this little notch down here below the platen. There's one on each side. So if I roll a sheet of paper into the machine, there's the start of the paper. And as we do carriage returns and the paper gets advanced, by the way, you'll notice the typing line is where this line indicator is on the card guide. But uh, as the paper advances, you will see right here the bottom of the page coming up in that little window and that'll tell you the end of the page is eminent. This is a very passive end of page indicator. It's just like a notch, a viewing window. It works pretty well except that you have to remember to look at it. It's not near your line of vision. Most people are going to be concentrating on what they're actually writing and depending on whether the carriage is to the left or the right of the print position there you're going to either want to look on the left side or conversely look at the equivalent window on the right side. I think it's quite elegant actually. Elegant and simple works quite well. This is the little silver Seiko made Royal Mercury, one of my favorite portables and it's trying to compete with a larger portable and it actually has a similar end of page indicator as the Hermes 3000. Yes, the little notch down here in the paper pan. So very simple and elegant to use as you saw with the Hermes. Not a complicated system at all. Da -da -da. So as you do carriage returns, line feeds, etc. As you get down toward the bottom of the paper, if you're looking at the notch, and there's one on each side, if you're looking at it, you'll see it right there starting to come up. And when it's right about in that position, well, you are at this point about maybe three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the page, as you can see right here. So it's an elegant little system. And again, there's a notch on both sides. So this is the Olympia Splendid 33. This is kind of indicative of the whole Splendid lineup. I wouldn't call it a purposeful end of page indicator system, but you can see this little edge of the paper pan bracket and then the front feed roller here on the left is the same on the right side. So as you advance the paper as you're writing, you won't really be able to see the end of page like an inch or so before you get to it, but you will see the end of the paper appear just above that feed roller right there. And so if you're looking at it, looking for it, you have a little bit of time, like one or two lines between here and when it pops out of the top of this bracket. So it's not super helpful, but 
If you're paying attention, you can see that happen before you actually completely lose the paper out of the machine. Okay, on the IBM Selectric 1, and I think all the other Selectrics, if I remember, there is an end of page indicator on the right platen knob, and I think this is one of the worst implementations of end of page indicator. I think it was written by an engineer and not by a uh, person who would be a typist or a user, but anyway, the dial here is incremented in zero through four. Zero, one half, one, one half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. There's an indicator here on the body. So what this represents is the platen itself has a circumference of four and a half inches. So two revolutions of the platen is nine inches. And since American length paper is 11 inches, then you would want to have this set to the two, which is the difference between nine and 11 inches. Very intuitive, right? You're following me? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's intuitive at all. Okay, according to the directions here, you set the top edge of the page to the writing line. And the writing line on the card guide, it's hard to see it here, is this bottom red line. So the top edge of the page set to the bottom red line, like that. Then we rotate the dial, so it says two, is lined up with the indicator mark on the top of the body, okay? And now, those two are set. Now as we advance the paper as we write, as it advances toward the bottom of the page, now when you get to be within four and a half inches of the bottom of the page, the indicator will tell you the actual true distance. So here I'm coming up on one inch and if you look at the indicator, I'm actually at my little four dots that I earlier did with the other typewriter. So it's pretty accurate. As we come down to, that's a half inch, and that says zero now on my dial, and I am at the bottom of the paper right there. So it's intuitive in the sense that you have to know that it's a four and a half inch circumference platen and you're using 11 inch paper so it's set to two which is the difference between nine and eleven right and the user's manual for the selectric also gives you the indicator settings for other lengths of paper but it's basically um, the difference between nine inches and whatever the length of your paper is well in my mind there's a lot of questions as to how useful the end of paper system really was in terms of pr in practice like how many secretaries out there in the day actually used their that system well some of these are fairly simple I, I think the simplest is the notch system down on the front of the carriage like in the case of the Hermes 3000s or this uh, Royal Mercury and similar ones the telescoping tie bar of the German machines is only useful as an end of page indicator at one particular length fully extended. And so it may not be at the point you want it to be uh, in terms of the distance. Uh, it is a simple system, however. Uh, the other American systems like the uh, Smith Coronas and the uh, Royal Quiet Deluxes, there's a few others I didn't cover, they're kind of special. You have to know how to use them. So if you're used to using your machine, if you've read the instructions, I've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. But if you're a collector like we are, oftentimes you have to refer back to how to use it or tinker with it because every one of them is different. And then of course, the IBM Selectric, as nice of a machine it is, I really think that's one of the poorest implementations of an end of page indicator that I've ever seen and I really think it was probably designed by an engineer and not really with someone who was considering user friendliness first. Considering it's all based on the circumference of the platen in, in multiples of that and then you have to take the difference between that and the length of your paper yeah, it's not intuitive as you saw so I would be curious though to know if you were a professional typist in the business world at one time or you use typewriters a lot did you actually use an end of paper system I would love to hear from you leave a comment down below and what do you think about the Selectric's end of page system did you like it I don't see how you could and personally also I should mention that that clear adjustable end of page indicator dial 
I've seen a number of those warped or broken on various machines. The kind of plastic it's made from, it was easy to warp if you got it exposed to heat and it broke pretty easy. So not the best implementation, not the best materials. But some of these systems like this notch system I think is pretty intuitive. It's just you got to be looking down there periodically to check for it. Well, leave a comment down below. Love to hear from you if you have used end of page systems actively while typing. In any event, I wish you the very best. Hope you stay creative, stay well. Have a great day. Bye bye for now.